Welcome back to the Fierce Fish First Tech Challenge programming tutorial series. Our goal in this series is to provide simple and straightforward guidance in programming an FTC robot. And in today's video, we are going to be taking a look at the Roadrunner Quick Start. Now the Roadrunner Quick Start is essentially a series of classes and op modes that can help us get understanding the gist of Roadrunner. It's very helpful for like configurations and how to set up and tune your robot. And today we are going to be looking, I'm going to be walking you through that and just basically explaining things as we go. So the first thing we need to do is actually go and install the quick start. Now we got to go to this website, which is the Roadrunner online documentation. This is linked in the description down below. And then if you click quick start, it'll take you to the GitHub where you can download the zip file or open it in your desktop if you have Git. If you're a Git user. Now I already have this downloaded and extracted so after you download and extract it, I'm just going to close this out, you are going to do the same thing that I'm doing now. You're going to go file open and then find Roadrunner Quick Start Master and open that up. I'm going to keep it in this window. Okay and everything is syncing in and you'll see we have if we go into our team code in Java, in the org.firstinspires FTC team code, we've got lots of things. We're not going to worry about util. That doesn't get touched. That stays the same. And then we've got all these classes in here. We even have a bunch of ones in op mode. So right now, there's a certain way that we should go through this that the um, designers suggest. So we're going to start in drive constants, and I'm going to kind of like fill this in as we go for like the specifications of my robot just so that you can get the gist of what's going on here. So this is drive constants and they, these are like constants that are like generic for your robot but are also generic for all kinds of robots so that it can be easy to kind of get you started. Like if we hear ticks per rev, this is ticks per rev of your drivetrain motors so mine are 383.6 so we're going to do that and the max rpm minus 435 this is in the specifications on your specific motors and that that can be found on your manufacturer's website or if your motor came with maybe a manual that can be in here now run using encoder if you have the drivetrain encoders you would set that to true if not you could set it to false the Designers recommend you set it to true because they say it works much better. I haven't used it without encoders, so I personally can't tell you this either way. And now the next thing we need to do in motor velo PID, that's the velocity PID, we need to set PID coefficients. So we got to go new PID coefficients, and we want to choose Acme Robotics's PID coefficients because they have their own that they made that work better with the Roadrunner than the ones FTC provides for us. So we're going to do that and just set them at all at zero for now. These are going to be tuned later in conjunction with the FTC dashboard. Everything including Roadrunner and the FTC dashboard is already installed in this quick start. So then we come down, we got the wheel radius. We want to keep everything in inches because Roadrunner uses inches, so my wheel radius is 50, so I'm going to divide that 50 millimeters, so I'm going to divide it by 25.4. Gear ratio, if you don't have it, you leave it as one. Track width. Now, the designers say that this is going to get this is going to get tuned later, but right now we got to give an estimate. And what track width is is the distance between the center points of your drive wheel wheels essentially so I'm going to set mine as 14 for now and that's going to get tuned later now these are the feed forward parameters we haven't discussed feed forward in our tutorial series but if you're using the PID this stays exactly like this so I'm just going to leave it and now these here are used for generating the trajectories of your robot. Of course, we're just going to leave these the same for now as well. We have velocity, acceleration, and jerk for the max. And then this is angular 
for the max. So angular velocity, angular acceleration, angular jerk. We'll come back to this once we get more advanced in Roadrunner, but we're just going to leave those for now. And then down here are just some kind of methods that are used in the programs to convert certain things like you see in coder ticks to inches, RPM to velocity, and getting the coder current motor velocity. So now the next thing we're going to do in this tutorial, we're going to go into the standard tracking wheel localizer, which is essentially if you have, they're called localization wheels. People refer to them as odometry wheels that like don't carry any power. We're going to go into that now. And Roadrunner assumes you have this standard configuration. And I'm just going to tune the all of these for my robot so we got ticks per revolution that is of your encoder now of course the wheel radius remember we're going to keep everything in inches so i i'm just going to say 60 because i don't know what my wheel radius is and then if you don't have a gear ratio we're going to leave it as one now the lateral distance they tell you right here they're very guiding in what they give you here and this is the distance between the left and right wheels so for on my robot, the distance is 15 inches. And then the forward offset is the offset of the, they call it the lateral wheel. I called it the, um, what did I call it? I called it the middle wheel when we did the odometry tutorials. I'm just going to leave it as four right now. And then they declare all of the things here. And then the rest of this, well, actually we need to touch these. Change it to your configuration name so that it can be accessed and then remember as we talked about in the odometry tutorials whatever port it's plugged into it's going to be that configuration name like say you have a lift and i call it linear lift i'm going to want to go linear lift lift but i'll just leave it like that for now you get i'm pretty sure you get the point now we have another encoder ticks to inches method there and we also have this list of getting the current position of the um, odometry encoders. I'm going to call them localization encoders for now. And this just returns as a list each of the current positions, and that's used internally in Roadrunner to get where the robot is on the field. Now I'm going to go into sample mechanum drive because I use a mechanum drive. If you use tank drive, you can go into that later and check it out. It's pretty much very similar, but we're going to start in here. You see, we got our PIDs up here. We've got, these are modes and modes can be very helpful when you're trying to find certain things about your robot. Like if your robot is set to a certain mode, do this. If not, then do this. Like modes are very important. So They've defined the modes here. We're just going to leave it. And then we've got all of these defined things. And here is our constructor, which is where a lot of the stuff happens. And we're going to kind of like not completely go through everything because we've talked about a lot of this stuff. We, we set them. They, let's talk about mode here. They set the mode to idle because we're not doing anything yet. And as you scroll through, they give you the to do's. So we're going to just go through like that. And this is defining your IMU. As we know, it starts out as IMU. And then Roadrunner uses radians, so just be careful of that. And then this is if your hub is mounted vertically, they want you to remap the axes because Roadrunner internally uses the Z axis. So you want the Z axis pointing straight up in the air and you can delete the comments there. We're going to have to import all of these things. You can just hit Alt Enter like three times and there you go. We also have to change the configuration names here, whatever the configuration names of your motors are. And then it puts the motors in a list. Roadrunner uses a list. Or they, Roadrunner doesn't use a list. Well, maybe they do. I don't actually know. But this program that they designed used a list. And a list is actually pretty easy to like access this here. So you can see here is an example of them accessing a list. It saves lines of code. And it looks very... It's kind of easier to understand, honestly. 
and then they use here DC motor EX. Now what DC motor EX is, is an extended version of the DC motor class that allows you to use like the velocity, acceleration, and jerk, and so that all those things for your DC motors. Just know that they use DC motor EX rather than DC motor. As we keep scrolling through, they set the run using encoder. They can use this because they defined a method at the bottom to set the modes. So instead of going like left front that set mode, and same with zero power behavior. Like if you see that and like all of this, these are things that are at the bottom of the program. So don't get confused there. And then here, reverse any motors. We're going to want to reverse the motors. For me specifically on the left side. So I'm gonna go, I don't wanna go that. What is it? Set direction. I almost forgot there. And then direction dot reverse. And yeah, and we're gonna wanna do the same for left rear. All right. And so now our motors are reversed and they want us to set the localizer if we have one. Now the localizer is your odometry wheels that we did in here. So the way we do this, cause this may look a bit confusing. So let's say we're trying to use this one that they gave us. So we're going to want to go in here and go set localizer and then new and the name of this. So it's standard tracking wheel localizer is what they called it. And then we need to get our hardware map. So I'm just gonna put the hardware map in there because of our constructor that was used in the standard tracking wheel localizer. Now trajectory builder, they have a couple different kinds of trajectory builders in here. And this helps you to generate your paths for controlling your robot. We're going to go over that in the next video about how to generate the paths, but they have three different trajectory builders that you can use here. One, they all have the start pose. One of them has the reversed, and this one here is the start heading. And then they also have turning voids in here, as you can see how that works following trajectory, how to get your last error, and this is what I mean by the modes. They have the different cases and different things to do during the different cases. And then, of course, updating the robot position, sort of similar to what we did in the odometry video. And then wait for idle because the mode is going to keep switching. We got is busy, and then all of these voids here that... Um, were used up top and then get wheel positions we don't really have to worry about any of this and this is how they set the motor powers in there and then getting the heading that's all of that now once you have done all of these things you are ready to start the tuning process now if you've once you install this app to your uh, robot controller phone you'll see all of these in there. One of them's teleop, the rest are autonomous. This one here is teleop. Now there's a certain way that we're supposed to go about doing this. And first is the localization test. And basically what it does, it kind of works hand in hand with the, well it has telemetry as well, but it works well with the field tracking on the um, FTC dashboard to um, see where the robot is on the field and if it matches it mostly if that's matched then you're good to go on so oh and one thing else I want to point out is all of these use mechanum drive so if you filled out the sample tank drive you're gonna want to switch this to the tank so that it'll work properly and then when you keep making changes and why is it not working it's because all of these are using the mechanum drive so after you finish the localization test, and that's working well, you're going to want to do either the velocity pig tuner or the feed forward tuner, which is here. Use the velocity pid if you are using run using encoder, and use the feed forward if you are not. 
Both are pretty easy to use. This one you're going to just adjust. Well, we don't really need to worry about what's going on in here actually, but what you're going to do is like graph the errors over time and you're going to want to go through the PID tuning procedure and you can use the um, configuration tab on the FTC dashboard to do that. The feed forward one I've, it involves pressing buttons on the controller and then you're going to get telemetry feedback and then you'll set your feed forward gains that way. And after you've set the PID or feed forward, the next thing you want to do is do the straight test. Now the straight test if it lands within like, let's say a few inches of the target, then you can call that test successful. If it's like way off or it's like not doing the right thing, then you would probably want to look at your drive constants or anywhere else that you may have went wrong. Okay. And then next would be the track width tuner in here. And important for the track width tuner, they want you to set the localizer. So if you really don't have a localizer, then it's kind of hard to do the track width tuner. But if you do have a localizer, then this works like pure magic because it'll give you what the actual track width is. And then you can theoretically do this with turn test as well, but track width tuner it gives you the telemetry of what your track width actually is. So that is like very helpful in the long run. And then next you do the turn test. If that works, you go on to the spline test. Now the spline test is where I've seen on like Reddit and everywhere that teams have the most trouble. Now, if we know where the spline wants to go, and we'll talk about this, like the coordinates of Roadrunner later and the trajectories, that'll be in the next video. But if we know where it wants to go, if it gets there, then you're all good. If not, then maybe you gotta like adjust your PID or adjust some drive characteristics. Like something with my robot, because we have a decimal for our encoder counts, sometimes that messes things up and it stops either a bit far or a bit short, plus or minus. So it's just things like that. And if it follows the spline successfully, then that was very successful. And then after that, you can do the follower PID. Because all, even if you're doing the um, feed forward, you have the follower PID. And you can adjust that just like any other PID controllers. There's two of them. And that will account for a lot of the accuracy. And then once you go through these tuning procedures, you're basically ready to have your robot start doing whatever movements you want. Roadrunner is a very helpful tool. And you're going to have to do this tuning process every time something your robot is drastically changed. Like something that adds or removes a significant amount of weight, you're going to want to do the tuning again. And once you do the tuning process a few times, you'll get pretty good at it and it'll go faster and faster and it won't seem like much at all. I really suggest this tuning process. So that's going to be it for this video and from all of us here at Fierce Fish, we hope you have a great day.